Okay, here's example one with using the periodic properties to evaluate a trig function. So uh, evaluate sine of 8 pi over 3. Okay, so first of all, sine, remember, and we talked about it in the previous video, um, the sine function has period 2 pi. So the idea here using the periodic properties is, uh, well, first of all, let's look at 8 pi over 3. So 8 pi over 3, is that a special angle on the unit circle? Well, not exactly, right? So pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, uh, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. So there's no 8 pi over 3 that appears in how we labeled it, but um, we could use periodic properties to find an angle uh, that's, um, you know, it's different from 8 pi over 3, but it's going to have the same sign as 8 pi over 3. So that's sort of the idea with periodic properties, is you want to use these properties to find a different angle that's between 0 and 2 pi, or 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Okay, you want to find a different angle that's between these two, that's somewhere on the unit circle. Uh, that has the same value at uh, the trig function, okay? So in this case, since we're dealing with sine, remember sine has period 2 pi, so what we do is we add or subtract 2 pi uh, to 8 pi over 3 as often as we need to to get some angle between 0 and 2 pi radians, okay? So then the way we do this in general is we ask ourselves, okay, is 8 pi over 3, is that larger than 2 pi or is it smaller than 0? Because if we answer that, that's going to tell us, do I have to subtract 2 pi or do I have to add 2 pi? So 8 pi over 3, it's, uh, of course, it's not negative, right? So let's look at uh, 8 pi over 3. Well, first of all, 2 pi. Okay, let's put 2 pi as something over 3 so that we can compare it to 8 pi over 3. Well, 2 pi, if we multiply that by 3 over 3, okay, multiply that by 3 over 3, uh, that's going to be 6 pi over 3. Okay? Now, 6 pi over 3, that's less than 8 pi over 3, right? So in other words, 8 pi over 3 is larger than 2 pi. That's what we just found out. Okay, 8 pi over 3 is larger than 6 pi over 3. 6 pi over 3 is 2 pi, so 8 pi over 3 is larger than 2 pi. So what that means is that uh, if we want to use periodic properties to evaluate this, we have to subtract 2 pi from this uh, maybe more than once. It turns out in this case only once, but we'll have to subtract 2 pi as often as we need to to get some angle between 0 and 2 pi that has the same sign. Okay. So that's what we're going to do now. So let's just subtract. Uh, so 8 pi you know, working color here, uh, 8 pi over 3 uh, minus 2 pi, okay? And remember, 2 pi, we just found is the same thing as 6 pi over 3, so this is 8 pi over 3 uh, minus, yeah, that blue is kind of fading, uh, it's the same thing as 8 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, okay? 8 pi over 3 uh, minus 6 pi over 3, that's 2 pi over 3, right? Now, 2 pi over 3, that is a common special angle on the unit circle, right? So, uh, 2 pi over 3, um, let's go back up here. So, here's pi over 3, here's 2 pi over 3, right? So, we found uh, here's 2 pi over 3, that's good. Now, how does that help us? Because remember, periodic properties uh, tell us that sine of 8 pi over 3, so let's come down here and write it, uh, sine of 8 pi over 3, okay, that equals the sine of 2 pi over 3. Why is that? Because 8 pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3, they differ by 2 pi, okay, or a multiple of 2 pi in more generality, but they just differ by 2 pi. So in other words, uh, if we take 8 pi over 3, subtract 2 pi, we get 2 pi over 3. So the periodic properties of the sine function tell us that the sine of 8 pi over 3 and the sine of 2 pi over 3 are the same, okay, because these two guys, 8 pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3, they differ by 2 pi. Okay, the difference between them is 2 pi. So since the period of sine is 2 pi, then the sine of these two angles are the same. Okay, so that's what the periodic properties really tell us. Okay. And we'll also, we'll see a picture of these angles on the unit circle, just so it's more clear. So sine of 2 pi over 3, what is that? Well, that's the y-coordinate where this angle hits the unit circle, and that's uh, root 3 over 2. Okay. So this is root 3 over 2. So that tells us that the sine of 8 pi over 3 equals root 3 over 2. So this is uh, root 3 over 2. And that's our answer for example 1. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and see, uh, let's draw what these angles look like, just to make it a little more clear. Okay, so x-axis, y-axis. So if we were to draw our big old unit circle here. Meh. So 2 pi over 3, okay, let's put uh, 2 pi over 3, where was that? Well, remember that was like about up here, okay, 2 pi over 3 is up here. So 2 pi over 3 is kind of about here, okay, that's 2 pi over 3, okay. So let's zoom in on this here. Now what about 8 pi over 3? Well remember, uh, 
if we take 8 pi over 3 and subtract 2 pi, then we get 2 pi over 3, okay? So that means if we take 2 pi over 3 and add 2 pi, we get 8 pi over 3, right? So 8 pi over 3 minus 2 pi equals 2 pi over 3. So just go back the other way. 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi means 2 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3, which gives us 8 pi over 3, right? So in other words, we're just thinking of this exact same thing, just the other way around. So add 6 pi over 3 to both sides, and you get 8 pi over 3 equals, uh, equals 6 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3, right? So that's um, what's going on there, okay? So 8 pi over 3 equals 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. Okay, that's just 2 pi plus 2 pi over 3, okay? So uh, if we want to put that uh, on the unit circle here, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll zoom back in over here. So remember, add 2 pi means go around one full revolution. So this angle right here is uh, 8 pi over 3. Okay. So if you take 2 pi over 3 and add 2 pi, that means add one full revolution, then you get 8 pi over 3. Okay. And notice they do have the same terminal side, they're coterminal, so they hit the unit circle at the same point. Okay. Um, so their sines and cosines are the same, and the tangents are the same, and the secants and cosecants and cotangents are the same, right? So that's just uh, how these angles look on the unit circle, kind of sort of just a rough sketch. Um, anyway, that's example one with using periodic properties to evaluate a trig function. So it might seem kind of convoluted, kind of complicated, uh, but it's just because I took a lot of time explaining the details. But just remember, all we had to do was look and say, okay, is 8 pi over 3, is that larger than 2 pi or smaller than 0? Uh, it's obviously not negative, okay, it's positive 8 pi over 3. So then what we do is say, okay, is it larger than 2 pi? Because if it is larger than 2 pi, then hey, let's use periodic properties. Uh, if it's not larger than 2 pi, we have to try something else, which we'll talk about stuff like that later. Um, but anyway, so this is larger than 2 pi, because 2 pi is 6 pi over 3. So what we do is take 8 pi over 3, subtract 2 pi as often as we need to, okay? Um, we kind of erase that here. So subtract 2 pi as often as we need to until we get an angle between 0 and 2 pi and hopefully that angle will be a special one on the unit circle, and it was, it was 2 pi over 3. Okay, uh, what if that angle isn't a special one that's, uh, what if it's not on the unit circle, how we labeled it, uh, then we'll have to do some other stuff, which we'll talk about later when we talk about more advanced techniques. Anyway, that's example one with periodic properties, uh, using them to evaluate trig functions.